So good morning, everyone. Appreciate you making time uh, for this session. Uh, I want to forewarn you. Uh, my name is John McGowan, and uh, I am the Commercial Automation Manager at Turtle and Use. Uh, my background is I spent uh, 12 years at Rockwell Automation and 24 years with uh, GE Digital, um, doing manufacturing, automation, software, et cetera, the early days of PLC. Uh, also, in the middle of my career, I spent 10 years as a science teacher in the Bronx. So after that audience, none of you scare me. Um, I'm here to tell a story, uh, you know, in honor of St. Patrick's Eve. Uh, it's, a, it's a story about an Irishman through uh, the industrial internet of things journey. So with that, one of my favorite comments or statements about a journey is that it begins with a single step. And that's where I want you to focus is on that first step of the journey and where you need to have your customers, colleagues, partners uh, focus is that first step. I happen to be a, uh, a Tolkien fan. And uh, this is a famous line from the Lord of the Rings where the hero Frodo is about to go on an epic journey. And he gets some advice from his uncle Bilbo. And so I guess I'm Bilbo in this case. Bilbo has the advantage of having been on a very dangerous long epic journey before Frodo starts his. And his advice is just remember that the minute you step into the road, there's danger out there. And you have no idea where you'll be swept off to. And a lot of our customers who are thinking about modernization and industrial Internet of Things and digital journey and transformation and every other buzzword you can come up with are very frightened by where they might get swept off to. So part of this is there'll be no technology here. There'll be no barcode readers or, or catalog numbers. No products will be discussed and no animals will be hurt. Um, this is all to talk about the, the culture change of the journey and how to plan the journey. So step back in time into the 1970s when I was in college. Yes, they did have college back then. And uh, I would be pressed into duty in the summers to meet relatives that were coming to visit New York at the airport. And the reason for that is this is before PCs, smartphones, uh, any other tools. So a lot like many of our factories, kind of at a very low level of automation and information. Um, often called organized chaos. And this is what would meet my relatives. Now, keep in mind, they're coming from a rural farms, towns of less than 1,000 people, very few cars, and they are greeted with JFK Airport. So it was very important that I would go out there and rescue them um, because they needed a local guide. They were not familiar with this much information. They couldn't make any sense out of it. They had no idea where they were, and coming from small towns in Ireland, they barely spoke English. This is an actual pamphlet that would be given out in subways and airports at the time in the 1970s. Welcome to Fear City. And there was a lot to be afraid of in New York City at the time. Uh, the murder rate was at an all-time high. The crime rate was at an all-time high. Uh, there were a record number of bank robberies and subway monkey mu muggings. And there was an apocryphal story that was going around of some bank robbers in the Bronx that came out to find that their car had been stolen. So they ran down the subway where soon they were mugged. Don't know if that story was true, but it kind of gives you a flavor for what New York was like. So as you might expect, um, my relatives came to New York and were very afraid. And a lot of our customers look at all the stuff that's out there about industrial Internet of Things, and they're afraid to take the first step because they're afraid of getting lost. Now, why is it that JFK was daunting? Well, if you decided that you were going to drive yourself, you went to the Hertz desk, uh, they would give you first directions of how to take a bus several miles outside the airport to find the rental car agency. And then they would hand you this wonderful map. And if you came from a small town with about two roads and no cars, this map might confuse you a little bit. And the first thing that they would say to themselves on landing is, well, where the heck am I? 
Other people were more adventurous. They would decide, I'm not going to drive myself. I drive on the wrong side of the road anyway. Let me get a, a friendly New York City cab driver. And although that's a unique approach, uh, hopefully you would get a good and honest cab driver, or you might find yourself on a three-hour journey through all five boroughs and about $150 more of the poor for going literally 15 miles. If you wanted to get a flavor for New York City life, they might jump on the subway. And as I said, um, there was the story of the bank robbers who got mugged in the subway. And at one point in time, you'd see a lot of characters, at which point it was too dangerous for the police and they would often be accompanied by a German shepherd or, or a, a Belgian Malinois. Why was the subway so uh, daunting? Well, if you thought that the street map of New York was confusing, they would hand you a subway map. And unless you spoke IND, IRT, BMT, 1, 2, Q, A, B, C, D, uptown, downtown, this map would make absolutely no sense to you. You'll notice that there's no key in here, no, no ex explanation of what's what. So again, our customers are jumping into this internet, in, industrial inter internet of things and there's all this verbiage and terms that they really don't understand. They have no context. They don't know where they are. One of my favorite uh, diagrams to show why customers are lost in IIoT is a classic illustration from David Copperfield where he's the little guy and he's just been dumped into London, the largest city in the world. And if you think New York's confusing, you spend some time in London. And his uh, foster parents are afraid that, that Dave is going to get lost on his way to work. So they hire a consultant, a high-paid consultant who knows all the streets and all the neighborhoods and all the different ways to get around in London. And so Mr. Micawber takes, takes uh, David to work the first day. And he rattles off numerous names of streets and neighborhoods and places and what's what and what's where. And in the end, David is completely confused, more lost than when he started out. And this is the danger of trying to come at too high an end where you're talking about digital transformation, digital twin, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and all these other buzzwords. Our customers get even more confused by all that because we haven't told them where they are and where they need to start. This is an actual IoT map from a consultancy white paper. And I want you to stress to you to stop using the term IoT when it comes to manufacturing. IoT will allow you from your phone to turn on your TV, your coffee maker, maybe even your, you know, access your email, play a video game, and maybe make uh, a, a flight reservation. You don't want that same system to be running robots, directing air traffic, or launching rockets. So begin to use the term IIoT, the Industrial Internet of Things. This needs to be a separate network dedicated to the huge volume of data and the complexity of the assets that are out there. I doubt that you would think that a navigating an airplane is the same as navigating your coffee maker. Uh, one estimate by MIT said that a single fleet of Boeing airplanes, I think the 767, generated more data in a year than Google does. So that's the, the order of magnitude of data. So begin to think of the term IIoT. This white paper, produced by a high-paid consultant, actually has 20-page glossary of terms that customers need to understand um, in order to get the rest of the white paper. So, why are our customers lost? Let me get rid of the pin. The reason they're lost is most of them know exactly where they need to go. My relatives understood that they wanted to get somewhere in the Bronx, an address, or maybe to midtown Manhattan. Looking at that map doesn't help them unless they're very familiar with the neighborhoods of New York City. The first thing they really need to do is to kind of pin down, where am I going? 
I'm going towards midtown Manhattan to stay at a hotel or see the sites. But they're really lost because that information doesn't help them in this map. They're lost right now because they don't know where they are. Someone or somehow the friendly college student with his car needs to go out there and show them where they are. And then they can begin to plan. So in today's technology, when we get into a car at the airport, no relative to come and meet you and drive you in or no friendly cab driver, you do an assessment. You hit your, your GPS on your phone, and it says, here's where you are. You're at Terminal 1 in JFK Airport. It's in this crazy place near the water. The next thing you do is you have to put in your destination. I want to go to the Grand Hyatt, New York. And then the mechanism, the data, will now give you a route, a step-by-step, turn-by-turn path, telling you how, how far, how long it's going to take. It will also provide optional changes in, and uh, detours. Because guess what? On your journey, especially in New York, things change. The, the conditions and the environment will change. So the system ha will, is adaptable to give you the ability to pivot and detour as needed. Seinfeld friends, uh, fans will remember the great episode where D Elaine has to drive to JFK Airport to get rid of annoying annoying boyfriend so he doesn't miss his flight. And she tries to beat the Van Wick. And anybody who's driven to JFK Airport knows, and in 50 years of driving to JFK Airport, no one beats the Van Wick. You have to be ready to detour and change your path. If you, if you were one of the subway people, there's now an app. You go on your app, you put in where you are, where you want to go, and it spits out turn-by-turn -turn directions of all the changes, interchanges that you need to do, about how long it'll take you, and more importantly, how much money it's going to cost you at each step. Again, this is a metaphor for the, the IOT digital transformation journey. We have to tell our customers, make sure they know where they're going, where they are, and then give them a very simple step-by-step -step path to that destination with clear understanding of how long and how much money it's going to take. So what about that destination? How do you know where you want to go? Well, that's easy if you're on a vacation. Um, that's based on interest. But for, a co for an organization, it's got to be based on a business outcome. How is my company going to make more money, be more profitable, more nimble, whatever those outcomes are? It should not be based on the newest technologies or this is really fun, this is neat, right? It's, it's an innovation. Do not innovate for innovation's sake. The assessment activity with the customer has got to have a number of parts. One is you've got to really identify and validate the business priorities and that all the key stakeholders are aligned. Manufacturing may want to do this, but IT may say, no, we need to do this first. Everyone has to get on the same page that this is a priority for the overall business to achieve that outcome. And those outcomes are usually defined by the CEO and the stockholders. So based on that outcome, those stakeholders have got, to be ident have got to be aligned on what are the minimal operational capabilities that we need to, to achieve the outcome. If it's energy savings, then there are capabilities our organization needs to do or implement or change in order to save more energy. And it's got to be a minimal operational capability. We have a, a, the Christmas tree trend in manufacturing of trying to, every group wants to get its own, its own gift. This is not a congressional budget referendum where everybody puts their own budget, budget request in. We have only so much money and so much time. What is the most important priority objective to achieve and what capabilities do we, do we need to achieve them? From those capabilities, you then ask the question, well, why can't the organization do that today? What is in the way? What is the burden? Is it people? Is it process? Or is it technology? Are we, are we running on paper? And we can't share information easily and quickly. A frank and open discussion of those three items will start to define what the solution scope needs to be. It will start to define that journey, the step-by-step -step journey we need to take to get to our destination. And you'll notice at no point here have we talked any product or any technology. We're talking about their business, their problems, their path. So this is how we build out the modernization journey. 
The first stage is we've got to do an assessment. Where do you need to go? Do you have enough money and time to get there? And what is stopping you? Right? And then where are you today? Where are you today? And that becomes a gap analysis. And then every assessment I've ever done has almost always identified that there's a network gap, that we cannot get data and information to the people that need to make decisions. And then the, every other uh, assessment I've ever done has identified that no one understands the data we have. We're, we're dying, we're flooded with data, we don't have any context. We don't understand the relationships of the data. So that first step, identify your connectivity gaps, the priority needs. Where is it? Where do we need to work on? And can we get the information we need to make decisions? The next step is build out a plan to make certain that you have connectivity and that you're getting the data. And then what, is the, what are some real-time operational reports like OEE or, or downtime tracking that, that will give us insight into how our, our operation is running. Once that's done, once you've built that infrastructure, kind of the spinal cord of, of, the, of the body of the company, you can start to build role-based dashboards. And you can also start to define reusable data models. I've seen literally thousands of blenders in my career. And almost all of them use the same data. They might have different programs on how to run, how long to run, what speed to run, different impellers, but they all use the same data, the same types of inputs and outputs. So you can create these templates that can then be adapted and copied over and over and over. An important step here is engagement with domain experts. The operators, the people on the line, really understand their process. Data scientists that come in from the outside don't understand the process. Those two, people, those two groups have got to get together at this stage. Um, knowledge comes out of data science combined with domain knowledge, and there is where you get a solution. And that's when you get to the next level of analytics where you're starting to build these things called digital twins. Can I represent an asset mathematically and do analytics against it? And analytics not only in the cloud, but analytics that are actually at the edge, at the site of performance. And then finally, when you've, when you've created this, uh, this edge network of data gathering and con contextualization, you begin, you begin to be able to do multi-site collaboration. You can begin to compare how does this equipment vendor uh, perform compared to other equipment vendors? How does this site running that product compare to a different site running the same product? Are there, are there correlations? Are there lessons that can be learned and applied to other sites? At that point, you begin to talk about technologies. Once you've defined the, the capabilities that you need to create the solution, then you have uh, a discussion on what kind of capabilities uh, and what kind of products you need to deploy. So in that first step, with what Turtle and Use will offer, are IBEs, Install Base Evaluations and Network Assessments. Where are you? Where do you need to be? What are the gaps? And then we begin to apply specific technology tuned to that solution, to that business outcome. So um, one of the uh, stories that I'll, I'll end with uh, is that I work with a top 100 food company who was planning with a large, one of the big four business consultants, planning a digital transformation and I asked the EVP of supply chain, how long have you been on this investigation? Four years. Four years, and they had not done a thing. <laughs> Why? Because leadership was concerned that they would invest in a technology that would be obsolete the minute they started. And I said, why are you concerned with that? They said, well, transforming our enterprise is a huge undertaking. By the time we value streamed and we planned everything, the technology we based our assessment on is obsolete and we've got to start over. And I said, why don't you just understand what your outcomes need to be, the basic business outcomes, go into a number of your sites, identify do you have the data you need to make those decisions, begin with one site on one line and begin to test the technology and then see what the results are. And if the results are good, accelerate them. If the results are not good, 
pivot your strategy and maybe there's something else. You've made a minimal investment, you've gotten a return on that investment very quickly, and you're able to make the de next decision. And if you base if you base your solution on your business outcomes rather than a specific technology, as the technology changes, you'll be able to adapt because you haven't made a decision based on a specific technology. You've made a decision based on your business. So they began to do that. They went into five different sites and they did their assessments and they connected their networks. They ran some pilot uh, proof of concept. Uh, some of them were wildly successful. Some of them found there was no return on the investment. And as a result, that Fortune uh, 100 company has greatly improved its profitability. And one of the things they had to decide was that one of their business units was never going to be profitable in this day and age. It was never going to be profitable. So they sold it. So with that, I would like to, just like my visitors to New York, know where you're going, understand where you are, plan your trip in small steps, be ready to change direction and adapt, and love New York. And for our, our manufacturing customers and, and partners, plan your destination, understand where you are, evaluate your gaps and your needs, connect your network, and you will learn to love IIoT. Any questions? So with that, I appreciate your time. Uh, any questions, feel free to contact our group, any member of our team, and uh, we'll be happy to help you. Thank you. Hey, John. Will you yes, start sir. sharing your screen one more time? Uh, Just in the past minute or so, it went out. Huh. Back, back. Hmm. Okay. So I'll back up. Where where what was the last slide you saw? Go down. Troy? Further Sorry? down. We saw that. We just didn't see that. Oh, the best slide of all. Yeah. <laughs>